All right, so we will officially get started. Again, this is Wells Fargo Internships and Careers. I am Dr. Caroline Harper from Jackie Robinson Foundation and a little bit about us, who we are and what we do. Since 1973, the Jackie Robinson Foundation was founded by Rachel Robinson, who celebrated her 101st birthday recently. So happy birthday to her. Um, she established the foundation in honor of her husband and our namesake, Jackie Robinson. We are the nation's premier scholarship and leadership development organization. We create programs, academic and both social and professional in scope to help students as they move forward through their careers as undergraduates and beyond. Um, recently, we launched the JRF Impact Program, which is an online platform for st students across the country. We are excited to share that. Um, and again, we will be talking about internships. So again, as we talk about all the things that we do in these programs, we want to help students develop, including finding ways to translate your coursework to opportunities in careers. So a little bit about us again, $95 million in grants and program sponsorships, more than 1,800 scholars and alumni across the country, 98% graduation rate for our students, and over 4,000 students who are in our JRF Impact Program. So that's a little bit about us in a nutshell. If you want to learn more about us, um, you can scan the QR code. You also will find more information about the Jackie Robinson Foundation Museum that we just opened about a year ago. So if you want more information, feel free to scan the QR code and come visit us virtually or in person. And with that, a little bit about our hosts, Wells Fargo, um, a person who has spent quite a bit of time working at Wells Fargo, more than 20 years, in fact. Um, he has actually developed his skill set beyond the classroom in multiple positions across the organization, which is, of course, some of the things we'll talk about today. He is, in fact, the Senior Lead Diversity and Inclusion Consultant, and he has held multiple other, result, other roles. Most recently, he is the Enterprise HBCU Strategy External Engagement Lead. He is Dewey Norwood. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Caroline Harper, don't you, you want to like take her on the road just to be your, your hype person? To, to pump you up as, you, as you're going in. And I couldn't help but hear the shameless plug that you've made there for the Jackie Robinson Museum, 75 Varick Street, New York, New York, 10013. For the folks that have not had a chance to go visit, you, you got to stop by. And we're really excited to have our, our great partners on from the Jackie Robinson Foundation. So Dr. Harper, thank you for the kind intro. And you touched on it earlier. Today is, I think, in my opinion, one of my favorite webinars of the year. And it's all about careers and internships. And so we built what I think is going to be a really great panel to spotlight what a career pathway looks like for, looks like better yet within our institution. So for the accounting majors that are out there, their career pathways is financial services. For my zoology majors that are on, because I know we have at least one. For our zoology majors on, amazingly, there's a career pathway for you in the financial services industry. So we're going to unpack all of those different pieces today and looking forward to a really, really great discussion. And QR code there, easy way to connect with me on LinkedIn for anyone that's not connected. Feel free to scan that to, to get connected in. Hey, as we continue on, we're going to jump over and talk a little bit about the firm. Many of you all may be meeting Wells Fargo for the first time. So as you think about that, firm... Diversified financial services provider, $1.9 trillion in assets under management across our firm. One in three households across the U.S. in some way, shape, or form has a banking relationship with us. So I think that's an important metric. It's something that's important to kind of measure uh, and, and keep an eye on. From our perspective, 10% of the small businesses in the U.S. in some way, shape, or form have a banking relationship with us. So very, very important there, as you know how important small businesses are here to our national economy and, and the global economy as well. Hey, I do wanna talk a little bit about the work that we've been doing and a huge shout out to partners like Shante Joseph and Michelle Martin and others that are leading this great work. You'll see this on the next slide. Some spotlights around our firm's longstanding commitments to supporting students. We wanna make sure that we're providing resources to help you all along your academic journey through scholarships and programming. And let's quantify that number. In the last 12 years now, the firm has provided over $116 million of financial support across all higher education programming. If you kind of disaggregate that data and you look specifically at the work that's happening in support for HBCUs, that number now has eclipsed $39 million of financial support, programming, scholarships, many other ways that our firm is engaging to support students along their academic journey. So we're very, very excited 
very, very excited about all of those pieces with things. Hey, we're going to spotlight on the next slide some important work that's happening across our HBCU Legends platform. This is actually a slate of branded, Wells Fargo branded and HBCU branded debit cards that we have available for all of our retail banking customers. You heard that number earlier, 69 million customers globally. Those customers that have a banking relationship with us have the ability to customize their banking experience and take advantage of one of these amazing HBCU Legends cards. Angel, as we jump forward, we'll let take a moment to spotlight some of the amazing brands that, that are there. So you see some of the amazing institutions that are, that are listed here. Maybe you see your college or university there. And here are our brand newest additions. So special thanks to all of these partners that just launched with us over the last couple of weeks. And all of these are available through our Wells Fargo website, where you can go on and actually customize your, your debit card with any of these amazing brands. And we're building more. We've got more universities that are coming into the fold. Hey, with that said, we're going to quickly hand the reins over to a, a trusted partner uh, in Jameson Donnell, great, great leader within our early talents group within Wells Fargo. Jameson, we're so excited to have you on today. You know, us bankers, we got we got to get we got to look at the metrics, right? We got we got to talk at the numbers. I want to give you this report, and I pulled this report just before we went live. So our number, I know that our numbers have increased, a record-setting number for us. I think in the last two years, I don't think we've gotten this high of a number. We have 643 official folks registered here for for today's webinar, Jameson. So obviously, they came here to see you, uh, <laughs> and not to hang out with me. But before I give it to you, Doc, let me give you some of the top performing universities. We've got Iowa State University in the mix with us today. We also have Jarvis Christian University uh, in the mix with us. Wonderful HBCU partners out in the Texas market and region. Arizona State University, ASU running through the tape in our top finishers. Cornell University, all of our friends there in upstate New York. Shout out to you all. Howard University. James, how do they say it? Do they say the real HU? I don't want to get in trouble with my Hampton friends here, but some people call it, call it just that. Purdue University, Boilermakers, making it through. Baruch College, also in the house with us today. Interestingly, my alma mater, the University of North Carolina at Charlotte, is with us today. And last but not least, our friends there at Rutgers University in the Garden State of New Jersey. So, Jameson, I'm looking through our list. We have in excess of 100 universities <laughs> represented here on today's call. So Love it. hand the reins over to you, sir, for your opening comments and to, to meet this amazing panel. Ladies Thank and gentlemen, you. let's give it to Jameson from here and continue with today's dialogue. Jameson, take it away, Doc. Thank you, Dewey. Thank you. Um, listen, I would uh, say uh, take yourselves off mute. If we were in person, I would say, hey. Shout out rep, rep your college, uh, but we're we're virtual, which is um, good as well. Um, they can wrap it in the chat though. They can they can wrap it in the chat. Feel free. Wrap it in the chat. Jump in the chat. And I the love chat it. Open for business, fam. So jump in there and share your comments with us. <laughs> yes, please do. Thank you for that, Dewey. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, Mr. Dewey no Norwood is the man. Um, some people have it, some don't. Mr. Dewey no Norwood definitely has it. Um, I look up to you, Dewey. Um, good afternoon and good morning, evening, depending on where you're joining us um, from. My name is Jameson Donnell. I am representing Early Career uh, Programs Team, okay? I'm a recruiter with uh, Audit and Control, but I'm representing the um, entire uh, Early Career Programs um, at this time. First, let me congratulate you for taking time out of your day to join the seminar and for investing in yourself. Please make sure you go ahead and scan the QR code here. Um, that is my uh, LinkedIn information. Uh, please scan it, I'm trying to get my followers up. Um, just kidding, uh, just scan, uh, reach out to me. Um, if you have any questions, uh, give me time to respond. Um, I do get a lot of inquiries, but I try to answer them all. Um, so let's move into the agenda. So today you will learn about the early careers experience and some of our different opportunities. Uh, you will also hear from our wonderful panelists um, and they'll talk about their personal experiences and then we'll have a Q and A. Let's move on to the early career programs experience. 
So here you see the early careers experience. Um, I like to really sum this up into four pillars, the four pillars that really support um, the early careers and, and our uh, different programs. So one, you'll get mentorship and you'll have networking opportunities. So that mentorship comes in different forms. Um, you'll have a manager, you'll have a buddy, um, and then you'll have a, another individual um, as a mentor to kind of help you matriculate through the process. All right, so you'll have several individuals to consult with, okay? Also, you'll get exclusive events. You'll be a part of exclusive speaker events. You'll hear from executive speakers, hear their experience. It'll be uh, different topics um, that you'll be able to engage in and, you know, develop your contacts there. You'll also have a developed curriculum designed specifically for the program that you go into. So therefore, you are pretty much going through this developmental process, developing that foundation of what the program is about or what that line of business um, is. Um, so you'll basically learn and develop through that, whether it's the internship or full-time um, analyst associate role. Um, and then also you'll get alumni support. You'll hear from individuals um, like our panelists who have been through the program, been where you may be sitting at that time, and you'll get to kind of pick their brains about, hey, how did you, you know, get from the early careers program that you were in to, you know, a senior lead manager. Um, so you can actually pick their, pro, um, pick their brains um, about uh, pretty much their pathway. So it's really good to kind of see that and, and uh, be a part of that especially coming in um, as talent and um, wanting to develop. So with our experience, you will, or with uh, the experience, our internship is about 10 weeks. So you'll go through that. Um, and it's all based off, you know, um, or it's all about upward mobility. So if you enter in that uh, internship and you experience those 10 weeks, um, then you'll have a performance evaluation and hopefully you'll be rehired for that following summer for a full-time associate analyst role. Um, so again, it's all based off upward mobility. The internships usually start um, in um, June um, and then the full-time roles usually start uh, in July. What we look for with those internships or the, the candidates, we look for grad dates with December, 2024 or May, June, 2025. Okay, and this is for the 2024 season internship. All right, for the full time roles 2024, we look for graduation dates December 2023 or May June 2024. And those are for the full time associate analyst roles. We do have graduate programs, and those vary. We have about three, um, but they, they vary depending on, um, again, just what what uh, program you go into and what they're looking for. Um, but we do have additional information and recruiters that you can connect with uh, via the talent um, community uh, link. And that is uh, that will be provided to you at the end of this presentation. So let's just go ahead and move on into our opportunities. So as you see here, um, we have three different buckets. Mr. Dewey Nor Norwood mentioned before that, uh, you know, basically there's something for everyone. And as you see here, we have banking and sales. We have STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And then we have a bucket, enterprise and control functions. Each line of business, um, if you have, you know, audit, we'll take audit, for instance, um, audit works across the entire enterprise function. So within audit, there's different audit teams. So I'll point out that you, many may not know this, but the audit team has technology, a technology team. It's called ETAG, Enterprise Technology Audit uh, Group. Okay. So just kind of thinking and, and referencing what uh, Dewey mentioned before, again, there's something for everyone. Um, and just make sure you kind of do your research because again, there are several areas in the banking industry, financial services that attract more than just business majors. Um, control management um, often target mathematic majors, right? There's a couple other things I would like to point out and some of which may be involved in the FAQs, um, but mo most applications um, for 2024 roles and early careers will open July 31st 
Um, but definitely join that talent community and you'll be able to receive uh, those updates on your program interest. Um, maybe not all programs will open by the 31st, but we would like to have all of those um, programs open by July 31st, which is in a couple of days. I think it's Monday. Um, applications will close around November or December 2023, depending on um, or it, when positions are filled. Also, um, program application. Uh, or all programs have an application process um, and interviews for selected candidates. Um, once you apply, then you're contacted um, and kind of move through the funnel uh, appropriately. Your individual recruiter will detail that process um, of if and when you, you know, reach the interview point. Just make sure when you're applying for these roles, you identify who that recruiter is and then you can reach out with, with questions. Um, program locations may vary, um, you know, Wells Fargo is across uh, the world. We have many different um, areas, cities that we're located in, um, countries, um, but specific programs have allocated locations, okay? Um, if you are, or you must be a U.S. citizen or permanent resident um, to be eligible to apply, Wells Fargo does not provide sponsorship for the undergraduate programs. Graduate programs um, may have exceptions, but again, it's about reaching out to that recruiter to kind of see what those um, exceptions are. So just make sure you uh, understand and, and ask those questions um, to appropriate parties. All right, um, so I just wanted to again kind of go over those um, those important points, um, but just make sure you um, engage in those resources that we'll show later on um, at the end of the presentation, just for application updates, um, exploring your different programs, understanding um, what you will really be involved in, and just reach out to those individuals, try to set up um, those appointments and uh, engage with them. And then also make sure you go to conferences um, where Wells Fargo is located, right? These career fairs, engage in those because then you'll actually get in front of, in front of a person and it may not be, you know, via phone or via Zoom. Um, we like in person and then you can uh, get a little more personal that way. Um, so yeah, just uh, get engaged and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. All right. So now we'll go ahead and transition into our analyst associate panel. Excellent, excellent. So at this time, um, I'm going to take a step back and I'm going to allow our panelists to introduce themselves and um, maybe mention their name, position in college that they represent um, and how long they've been with the company. Uh, let's go ahead and start with uh, Mr. Chase Love. All right. Thank you, Jameson. And hi, everybody. Um, my name is Chase Love. I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois. I uh, graduated a little bit over a year ago from the University of Notre Dame, and um, currently I'm based out in Charlotte, North Carolina, working as a financial analyst within commercial banking and specializing specifically in the healthcare industry. So uh, really excited to be here with you guys and grateful to be a part of the panel, but I'm um, going to pass it over to Odera so you guys can meet him. Thank you, Chase. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, my name is Odera Mwalu, uh, currently based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, working in the consumer lending department, specifically cards and merchant services as a finance analyst. Uh, went to Bethel University in Minnesota as well, so haven't really left too much. Uh, born and raised here as well. Um, and yeah, super excited to be here. Um, it's a great opportunity to you know speak to you guys. Uh, passing it over to Christina. Thank you, Adara. Hello, everyone. My name is Christina Skutelnik, and I currently work as an internal auditor, specifically for the enterprise and functions finance and legal team. I graduated last year from the University of North Carolina at Charlotte, and I recently completed the audit associate program. And I'm really excited to be here and to be speaking with you guys today. Thank you so much, panelists. I am so excited for this panel and for you all to hear from these uh, wonderful people. Um, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold it up any longer. We're just gonna jump right into the questions. All right. So the first question. Um, let's start with uh, Chase and Odera on this. Um, so I know you all were highly sought after prospects coming into these programs, right? So the question is. Why did you choose Wells Fargo as a place to start your career? Let's start with Chase. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
I think it's kind of interesting because uh, growing up, I never really had the intention uh, or at least passion to um, work in fin in the financial industry or work a part or be a part of a bank. And uh, I never really had too much exposure to like corporate America, at least in my family. Um, but honestly, I was grateful enough to kind of have this opportunity afforded to me. Um, and when I saw it, I think two things really jumped out for me. Uh, one aspect was just the brand name. I mean, Wells Fargo is known worldwide, uh, one of the biggest banks. Um, and it's a lot easier when you're talking to, um, you know, somebody else and you're trying to discuss like what you do on a daily basis and people already kind of have idea. When you say Wells Fargo, you know, what you do. Um, and it also looks good on the resume too. So that was a little added benefit. But um, besides that, it was just more so the fact of, I wanted to make sure I started off my career on the right foot. And so being a part of Wells Fargo, I knew I was gonna be um, tested and have the opportunity to have that foundation to really develop um, those skills. Because being a part of a bank that's so big, um, you know, it's gonna be very you know, structured, very regulated, very policy oriented. And overall, just very professional on a day-to-day -day basis. And so um, kind of building those habits now was something that I really wanted to be involved in. And, you know, over the last year and about a few months, including my internship of being a part of Wells Fargo, it's, it's come true so far. So, um, but yeah, that's the biggest reason um, why I wanted to join Wells Fargo. Yeah, love that. Love that. Odero, what about you? Why did you choose Wells Fargo as a place to start your career? Yeah, so very similar to Chase. Um, obviously, Wells Fargo is such a, a, it's a huge bank and it's known worldwide, like Chase said. Um, so that kind of initially drew me to, you know, apply for the, you know, start the application process. Um, and as I started going through the application process of applying, of applying to different places, um, you know, it really, it really stood out. One, the culture of Wells Fargo. I love the community feel of it. You know, it's such a big bank. Um, but everybody is, you know, it's very close knit in terms of you can work with higher level execs at, you know, an early age, which is something I've been blessed to be able to, you know, say that I've done. Um, and then, like Jay said, um, you know, the opportunity for growth and to learn. There's so many brilliant people at Wells Fargo that, you know, they want to pour knowledge into you. They want to take you under their wing. And that's something that really drew me to Wells Fargo um, in, you know, as I was going through the internship process. And then once I, once I was an intern and I got offered the full-time position after my internship, there was, there was kind of no saying no at that point. Um, you know, it was, it was just such an amazing experience, so. Excellent, excellent, thank you. Um, and so we'll, we'll stay with you, Adara, and uh, jump right into uh, the next question here. Um, so with that, how has the current environment impacted your role? Yeah, so uh, I'd like to bring it back a little bit to my internship. My internship was during COVID. It was right in the midst of COVID. Um, so all of, as I was going into the internship, there was a lot of uncertainty with a lot of my friends in college, like, oh, is our internships going to, you know, go through? Because I had a lot of friends who didn't, who had their internships canceled. Um, and luckily enough, and, um, you know, Wells Fargo said, you know, we're going to have the internship, uh, but it was only for a month. So it was a little... Um, going from there to kind of transitioning out of COVID, it's, there's a the little things of, you know, stuff in office or learning, or there's a learning curve that, you know, may have gotten a little slowed down with um, me not being able to be in office during the whole time that I've been at Wells Fargo. Uh, so as I've been coming back to the office, it's just been kind of, you know, picking up that learning curve and really um, advancing and trying to get back to where I should be. Um, but it was still a great opportunity to be able to work during COVID, um, especially post-grad. Uh, you really have to figure out what you're going to do um, at certain times, how, how you're going to do it, really have your day structured, um, especially since you're at home and you're not going into the office. You know, how are you, how are you adding value to the company? How are you, um, how are you maybe, not, you're maybe not getting babysat as much by your boss, so you really have to take initiative? Um, so I think those things really helped me out in early in my career with just of structure and how to do things going forward. Excellent. That's a, that's excellent per points. And I think just to kind of add to that, you know, we're we're going we're currently coming off COVID, if you if you will. Um, but still, there's things that's going to um, impede our you know efforts right um, in our day to day. So we're always going to. 
uh, you know, come up on something that's going to, you know, impact our role or impact our current environment. Let's make sure we're doing our mental health checks. Um, that's very important. Um, but also uh, listening, like Odara said, listing out your, your tasks for the day and just being very organized in that, right? Or organization is a skill and it can be developed if you don't have organizational skills. All right, just wanted to mention, mention that. Um, so let's slide over to Christina. Um, same question. How has your current environment uh, been impacted? Or excuse me, how has your current environment impacted your role? So if we continue talking about COVID, I began with Wells Fargo last year. So conveniently for me, the world has adjusted a little bit to COVID by that point. But I do get to... Um, experience those three days working in the office and two days working at home, which has been extremely wonderful for my work-life balance. And um, generally, I think um, uh, a lot of our, everyone enjoys this uh, part of our job that we have this flexibility. But if we wanna talk about a little bit more of the financial, uh, current financial market, and um, this environment for my role specifically as an internal auditor, it hasn't really changed a lot. It hasn't had a very specific large impact because um, as an auditor, something that we do is every day we are assessing risk. Every day we're trying to make sure that the company has the correct controls in place to mitigate any risk. So there's really no, I uh, guess, cause for concern. Yes, we are aware of everything that is going on, but it's sort of part of our day-to-day -day job. Excellent. And Christine, I know you, you, you came in you know, last year, um, maybe we can say on the back end of COVID, but what do you know now that you wish you had known when you were in the recruiting process? Definitely is being open-minded. And again, we've talked about how Wells Fargo is such a large company and we have so many different opportunities and many different roles available. And uh, just being open-minded to um, uh, different opportunities or maybe different roles that you might be um, not even thinking about or not even interested in. If we want to bring in a little bit of a personal note, I. Um, wanted to be a financial analyst. That is what I was applying for, what I was looking at. But looking through um, Wells Fargo's early talent programs, I saw audit, I decided to apply. And I'm extremely grateful that I took this opportunity because I found the place in my career where I want to continue to grow. So definitely be open-minded. You might find your dream career in an unexpected place. Excellent, Christina. Thank you so much. I think that's a, a wonderful point to mention, especially nowadays. Um, excellent, excellent. So, Chase, uh, let's let's move to you. Um, what do you know now that you wish you had known when you were in the re recruiting process? Yeah, I think um, I think a big aspect for me is just the importance of being able to um, essentially communicate your value. Um, I think before my Wells Fargo internship, I had. A couple of interviews where the interviews essentially could have been better, uh, you know, got stumped up on questions and things of that sort. And so um, by the time I got to my Wells Fargo interview, I really prepared as much as I could in terms of knowing exactly uh, what I was passionate about, knowing my strengths, knowing my weaknesses, what I wanted to improve on, and possibly what I wanted to do um, further my career. And, you know, after, uh, gratefully, I got, you know, the opportunity to come back to Wells Fargo. Um, and I got, you know, into the doors, I essentially thought that was it at that point. But really, that's just the beginning in terms of the fact that, you know, once you walk into the Wells Fargo doors, you're going to meet so many people, not only on your team, um, but on your floor, within your city. Um, the Wells Fargo employee base is just huge. And so as you meet those people, it's, it's super important to still be able, like, be able to know, you know, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What do you want to improve on? And what's your passion about and stuff like that? Because really, I feel like, the recruiting process never ends. Like you never know who you're gonna run into and what opportunities that they can really provide for you. Um, literally my manager told me about his experience um, where he told his manager that he was interested in becoming a manager. And that's something that he was passionate about. I think three or four years later after, the, um, after that, he's managing this team. And um, I can see on a daily basis, it's something that he really loves to do, which is, I know that's something that I'm really trying to focus on at this point. So, um, 
I feel like in order to do that, at least for me, I know I try to at least think on like a monthly basis, like um, try to rehearse essentially that 30 second elevator pitch of like, you know, um, you know, like, like I said before, try to communicate that value. And so, um, yeah, just understanding that that is a lifelong process. And I'm really glad that I kind of started that in the interview process because um, it's something that I try to continue to do without because it's just super important. So That's great. And I love that you um, continue to practice that elevator pitch. I think that's so important. I actually do a networking and branding presentation and I actually mentioned that um, as far as that elevator pit pitch or your personal brand statement, if you will, uh, just having that development in your pocket each time, anytime you add something to your, your resume or, you know, have a credential added, it's important to add that and be able to communicate that, um, you know, to whoever you're speaking to. So I think that's important. And I think that's, that's huge that you continue to practice that because you never know who you're going to come across, especially in the organization as vast as Wells Fargo. So thank you. Thank you for that. So let's move on. This question is just for the general panel. Um, so to all panelists, what did you learn during your internship that you may not have learned in college? Um, for me, one of the biggest things that I learned in my internship, well, there's two things. One was how to take criticism. You know, in college, you can, you if you have an assignment and you submit it, your professor might just, grade it, say, oh, it's good, or oh, this is wrong, or this is wrong, right? Versus when you're in, when you're in a role like an intern, you know, there's, I always say that you should listen to the message and not how they, the messenger says it, right? So you can, your, your boss can have a super harsh tone with you or be just super matter of fact, but listen to what they're actually saying. And that took me a little while to adjust to, you know, it's, you really need to be able to have the ability to just go, cut straight through all the noise and get to the actual message. Um, and that's one thing that I learned from my internship. And the other thing was you, you got hired for a reason. And I feel like a lot of times, in, especially whether it's internship or early career, you can lose a lot of confidence if you're struggling early. And a lot of people, young people don't realize, and I say young, I'm only 24, but um, there's a learning curve. You're not gonna know everything day one. It's super hard to learn. You're not, it's, it's not possible to know everything that you need to know about the business day one. There's a big learning curve and there's a big adjustment, uh, but still maintain the confidence that you're hired for a reason. There's traits that they see in you that really drew them in and made them wanna hire you. I think that's super important to remember as, someone early in your career. Um, so those are the, those are probably the biggest two lessons that I learned in my internship. Yeah, and just piggybacking off of Derek, because um, I think the biggest thing for me is just asking questions, which I, I know is something that probably everyone has heard, um, but I don't know personally, like I hate asking questions because I'm like a do-it-yourself type of person. And I also feel like every question that I ask is like, like dumb or I just can like figure it out on my own and stuff like that, um, which is, that's the wrong way of thinking of things. Um, more so just because of the fact that one, you know, trying to do everything on your own or just spending that time trying to, um, you know, trying to circumvent asking questions and stuff like that, or trying to think that it's gonna be a dumb question and stuff like that. Um, it just, it, it really wastes time overall because you can sit there for like 20 to 30 minutes trying to figure it out when you can just ask a team member and then they will sit down with you, explain it very thoroughly until you intuitively understand it, which is um, so valuable for many reasons, because one, you get that time immediately to um, you know, develop and for other people, you look very curious and interested in your job. So uh, several benefits in that aspect, but also like you're really benefiting the whole team because um, it's one thing to like learn something, but another thing to teach it to other people. So I have analysts on my team who I ask questions up um, about things and sometimes they struggle with things but sometimes they're you know able to answer it and stuff like that but really we're making the whole group better um because if they can teach it then they really know it and hopefully i'm i want to get to the point where you know i know something and i can teach it to analysts that are coming behind me so um but all that starts all that progress as like a team starts with just asking the question in the first place which i know for me um in terms of building habits i try to ask one question a day just to make me very comfortable with that process um 
and to get over that that fear and you know that built up um habit and stuff like that so um but it's a you know it's a work in progress and stuff like that so um but it's helped me so far just you know little by little yes and i agree with all of those points because what i want to say is that especially coming from college you sort of um have this uh um, and when you begin your full time position, you sort of kind of think like, OK, I should know everything and how to do everything at my job. They hired me for a reason. I want to do it well. But definitely it is OK not to learn, not to know everything in the very beginning. And in college, you learn a lot of these uh, fundamentals. So you learn how to um, think critically. You learn, I guess, the fundamentals about this business that you will be in but definitely is you you're not expected to know everything and don't be ashamed of not knowing something well where you should be ashamed is if you're not trying to learn anything so i guess that's the biggest takeaway is learn <laughs> excellent thank you all and there's a common theme here right come in humble ready to learn it's a developmental program right we're basically paying you to develop we want you to develop these things are, or these programs, these internships and full-time analyst associate roles are designed for you to develop and then hopefully carry on um, with Wells Fargo. So we wanna invest in you, right? So thank you all for that. So let's move on to the next question. What was the most challenging part of your first year with Wells Fargo? And what did you learn from it? How much time do you have? Uh, first year was super <laughs> challenging post-grad. Um, you know, it's a big adjustment going from college where everything's kind of structured. You know, you have, you know, it's less structured than high school where you have classes and then you, but um, as a college athlete, I'm sure Chase can sure. speak to this as well. Um, my day was very structured with what I had to do. It was go to class, lunch, study for a little bit, go to practice uh do homework and then repeat um and then coming into you know the first year out of school it's it's a wild wild west everything you you know you can have certain meetings you can have maybe two or three meetings a day but um what you do in between those meetings especially when early on you're not gonna have a lot of work um there's there's a lot of downtime that it takes a while for you to kind of figure out your routine and how you want to balance that free time and you know your work. Um, for, so for me, it was kind of the balance with that. So I tried to fill my time with learning as much as possible. Uh, we have a great we have a great database called Develop U that has a lot of our trainings, but also also a lot of knowledge that um, a lot of different topics that if you need to brush up on something, like if I need to know more about accounting or even something that you want to learn, like if I want to go take a Python course. You know, there's a lot of things available to, um, and Jameson touched on it too. You know, you never stop developing. You always keep on developing. Even when you're out of the development program, uh, I've been out for a year now, you, the learning process never stops. Um, so that was kind of the biggest challenge for me is how to fill my time when I maybe don't have that much work to do, um, but always filling it with something, whether it's, you know, taking mental health time where you need to take a break and you're not, you know, working from sunup to sundown or whether it's taking the time to learn something that you um, may not have as much knowledge about. So in keeping with our theme of learning, which is something that we'll continue to have to do throughout the rest of our life, doesn't just end at college. Definitely the most challenging part for me was being able to absorb all of the information that I was getting because throughout the um, early talent program I received so many trainings um, I met uh, and I was able to be in meetings where we communicated with uh, some uh, ex extremely experienced professionals and just sorting through that information choosing what is most important to me right now and applying it in my day-to-day uh, -day life and throughout my career so definitely is absorbing all that information sorting it through and knowing what to store for later and what's important now. And I can follow up because I think my idea is kind of a little bit of a combination of both of those because um, mine is just more so being patient throughout this development process. Um, I had the opportunity to, um, over the course of this year, work on two teams. One was like um, as an operations analyst where it's very so much uh, strategy based, trying to figure out ways to be efficient, save costs, 
um, putting our um, putting ourselves in the shoes of others and trying to figure out what's the best path best path forward as compared to being a financial analyst where it's a lot of historical analysis and trying to project the future performance of companies and stuff like that. Um, two different ways of thinking. And throughout that process, um, I know I was like very, very hard on myself because I felt like I was not progressing. Um, similar to like what Odero said, like being an athlete, um, it was very easy for me to understand that I needed a structure for how my workday was going to be. And I had a structure and everything and learning, but like it, it was just... I wasn't improving at the time at the pace that I wanted to. Um, and so it was interesting because six months through that process, six months um, through this process, it's been the same development where month one and month two, month three, month four, it's, it's super difficult. You're not really going to know what's going on um, and you're more so just absorbing. But by the time it hits like month five, month six, and it might, and, I, and I'm still learning now, um, you're, you'll start to be able to like understand what's going on in meetings, be able to contribute a little bit and actually come up with questions um, depending on like what the topic is and stuff like that. So um, just being patient with myself throughout that process was the biggest thing for me because I was just, I, you know, wanted to learn everything and be a perfectionist and know it all. Um, but really experience and time, like that'll be like the best, that'll be your best friend. And you just have to like, just relax and understand that like um, everything will work itself out. Your day-to-day -day interactions and what you're doing on the job will tell you everything that you need to know. Um, and so like, it gives me a lot, a lot of excitement because like a year from now, um, I feel like I'm going to be much further. Um, and so, um, you know, it gives me, you know, I'm very optimistic about it. So just be patient. Yeah, and I, I just want to commend the three of you for just, just having, you know, that mentality to continue to strive, you know, for greatness and continue to learn and develop. Uh, Odara, you mentioned develop you, which I think is a very important point, especially when you're in a part of any organization of just continuing to develop. But I appreciate you mentioning that as a resource that uh, Wells Fargo provides um, that you can continue to, to develop even outside of your role on, on different things. Um, so that's an, a very in, important point. And again, just commend you all for just continuing to strive for, for greatness, um, for sure. Now with that, let's, uh, let's jump into our last question. So at this stage in your career, what keeps you at Wells Fargo? So for me, it's definitely the culture. So I hear a lot from other uh, friends at other companies or even online about the horrors of working in corporate. But my experience here, experience here has been nothing but pleasant. Like I love my manager, my team, um, even our program managers and everyone in the early talent uh, program is just so helpful and willing to help you. They're supportive, they're friendly, they're willing to answer any questions that you may have. And everyone seems to understand that you're in the beginning stage of your career and they want to help you succeed. So it's not you're competing against your coworkers, it's they're trying to raise you up. So that definitely keeps me here. I have met a lot of great people, made some really close friends. So the culture is definitely what keeps me at Wells Fargo. Yeah, I think for me, it's a, it's a couple of things. Uh, I think one aspect is just now that I'm within Wells Fargo, um, you know, holistically, there's a ton of jobs that you can do. Um, but it's interesting because like within Wells Fargo and Jameson showed it with that slide of all the different paths that you can go. Um, anything that you're interested in doing, especially like on a daily basis in terms of the function um, and the way you engage with your team and stuff like that, you can really find it within Wells Fargo, which for me, it's like an added benefit because, you know, you don't have to go too far in order to, you know, if you wanted to, uh, you know, change your, per your career path, you know, you can find that within Wells Fargo. Um, but also people are very welcoming just to tell you about their job, what they love about it and stuff like that. And, you know, add on to that, it's like a, a form of networking as well. So um, I love the fact that, you know, the mobility within, the, within Wells Fargo and the fact that they really encourage it because, of course, they want to keep everyone here. Um, and the more experience that you have within Wells Fargo and in another line of business, you can add that to another place. So um, that's one aspect. Um, I think another one, and Christina touched on it, is just the fact that uh, really the culture. Um, being a part of two teams uh, within the past year, I've had the, you know, I've been grateful to work under two amazing managers who started off our relationship with asking me more so, what am I passionate about? What do I love to do? What do I want to do with my career? 
rather than like, how can I keep you at Wells Fargo and stuff like that. And I feel like that really set the tone of more so, um, you know, seeing me as a person and seeing more so wanting to help me develop. Um, and also, um, I feel like that mindset by my managers kind of spread throughout my team as well, because it, you know, it sets the stage for like a culture of just learning and being ourselves and just trying to do a great job as a team, more so as a family uh, throughout that process. So I think it's something um, I've really appreciated and uh, no time soon do I plan on uh, leaving Wells Fargo because of it, so. Yeah, and then echoing both their sentiments, um, I have an amazing team, an amazing manager who I've been given a lot of opportunities to be able to both succeed and fail, but learn from all of them. And my manager's done a really good job of being patient with me and developing me. Um, and honestly, the growth that I've seen in myself in the last three years, I don't, I, I don't think that I would be able to grow as much as I have had I been with a different firm. Um, just with the opportunities that Wells Fargo has provided for me in terms of networking, um, in terms of mentorship with within the company, and you know the opportunities that are given to me, I'm able to. I, touched on a little bit on the beginning, but I've been able to, you know, have a lot of, you know, I have been able to have a lot of conversation with high level executives or working hand in hand with my director instead of me just getting pushed down work that, you know, is random work. You know, it's meaningful work and it's something that I've really grown to appreciate. Um, the fact that I've had responsibilities at a young age that kind of propel me um, further than a lot of other people you know, who are in different, who are in different companies, but maybe in the same, same role, but the opportunities that I've been able to have, you know, it's been, it's been truly amazing. And I'm glad that I've been able to stay here. And uh, yeah, like Chase said, I, don't, I, there's no way I'm leaving anytime soon. Thank you all. And yeah, and, and culture is uh, unbelievably great. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's easy to say that. And I think, um, you know, a lot of times you find people drinking the Kool-Aid um, but being a part of this organization, and I didn't even think speaking um, to uh, individuals at career fairs, you'll really see that Wells Fargo, uh, Chase mentioned it, his, his manager pouring into him, um, asking him about himself. I think that's very important. I think that's consistent across, you know, the enterprise. Nothing's perfect. It's not what I'm trying to communicate, but in several groups, you'll find that individuals really care and are extremely passionate about where people go and what is the next step. You know, we have managers that are managing our associate um, associate analysts, right? Um, and bringing them through the program, our interns as well, and they have other jobs, right? So they're actually, you know, providing their, or they're giving their time um, to others, right, in addition to doing their jobs. Um, so I think that's an important point to mention as well, um, when you talk about the culture and, and what these individuals are, are doing. Uh, make sure um, when we'll speak life into it, when you have the opportunity um, to join Wells Fargo and this, this wonderful company, you attach yourselves to individuals like Adara, Christina, and Chase, right? Find them, seek them out, um, and, and attach yourselves to them because they're the experts at this point. They've been through the process, whether that was the internship and or, you know, associate analyst uh, program. So uh, make sure you find them um, and, and Ask, the, ask questions, pick their brains. And also, again, as mentioned before, attend these conferences, do your research, read the job descriptions before you apply. It's very important. Um, and structure your resume accordingly. Don't lie, structure it accordingly, right? Um, so yeah, and just make sure um, you're engaging um, in, in the circles that um, are putting you in a situation to be successful, all right? With that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it back to uh, Dewey for our Q&A. So, Jameson. Yes, sir. Let me tell you what. Um, we're going to take you on the road. I was, I was bragging about y'all earlier. You know, we're taking Doc on the road as the hype person. But, Jameson, I am, I'm taking notes here of this masterful facilitation, the Q&A, those pauses. You, you look, I, I'm going to let you fill in your own favorite talk show host. That was Jameson. That was Jameson. Stop hey, it. Listen, you know, listen, that's, that's how he does it, though. You, you know how they do. 
panelists celebrate you. Amazing, amazing information. Listen, we are pivoting into q and I'm going to give a reminder, and I know that Dr. Harper will, will mention this again later as well. We know we have some folks that joined with us a couple of minutes late. Perfectly fine. Don't forget, you're going to get access to the playback of today's session. So if you missed a couple of minutes or you were coming from work or took a minute to get connected, no sweat. Just know that you'll have access to the playback on things. Dr. Harper, we want to go ahead and bring you aboard here. And absolutely, we're still shouting out the colleges there in the chat. So drop those things in. Dr. Harper, a ton of great, great information that they shared. I know that there are also some questions that have come in in advance and some things that you may have in mind from your seat. We want to give you the mic here as we jump in and we're going to do our fast run through relative to Q&A. So ladies and gentlemen, let's bring her back, Dr. Caroline Harper. Dr. Harper, take it away. Thank you, Dewey. So yeah. a little bit of, lots of good information, a little bit of questions here and there. Um, really dealing with process. So because the panel covered almost everything that we usually talk about in these spaces. So um, you all talked about, you know, just being honest about who you are, um, finding ways to articulate some of your um, assets, including if you just like to be the person who asks questions, there's ways to talk about that. Or if you're the person who really just wants to learn more about your space. So one of the questions is before you get in the door, and we know it's important that you should, of course, understand that you don't know everything there is to know. But before you even get there, the question is, how do you actually highlight these kinds of traits in a application or a resume so that it would stand out? I think for me, just um, pairing it with the different experiences that you have is probably the easiest way. I think all of us have like a ton of skills that we probably we probably like pass over or think it's like nothing. But when we think about our, you know, the jobs that we've had, internship, classes, sports, um, arts, anything of that sort, and you talk about the, the dedication that you put into it, um, how difficult it was and how you essentially um, came with a solution to it, um, you'll understand that those same type of actions and tendencies are what you're gonna see within the workplace as well. So um, it might be hard to highlight an exact, I'm great at this, I'm great at that. But if you can look at all your experiences and see you know, where you developed and how you improved and stuff like that, I think that'll be a big, like one, a great indicator of um, you know, giving you some insight into um, what to highlight and how to do it. And touching on that quickly, Chase, too, um, I think it's important for you to really highlight the main traits that make you who you are. Um, you know, if you if you've taken a couple of accounting classes and you, you know, you say, oh, I have accounting experience. Um, if you don't have like real accounting experience or if you if that's not something that you want to specialize in, don't put it on there um, or maybe put it on there, but maybe not highlight it as much really highlight what makes you you and i think that that's pretty important to remember as well thank you that makes a lot of sense so a couple of questions that are coming in a lot of them having to do with specific majors where do you find these opportunities where do you find opportunities in certain locations um how do you move across these different spaces so to sum all that up what the question really is is really how do you find out about these opportunities is there a place that people should go are there recruitment fairs that happen throughout the year where do people find out about opportunities for Wells Fargo, particularly whether it's an internship or if you're a graduate student or if it's just a standard full-time opportunity? Where does one go to find out about these things? Um, so our website, uh, Talent Community, is the best way. And again, we'll offer those resources um, at the end of this uh, presentation. Um, but Talent Community is really the best way. And then also we have a site, um, which we just transitioned with the, our name. It used to be University uh, programs. We are now early careers. So the, the link on the slide says university programs, um, but that will be corrected um, in the next few weeks. But uh, visiting our website, um, we post things um, and we keep it up to date as much as possible. Um, but we go to many events. Um, I would say stay connected with your career development office um, at your uh, institutions because your institution's career development office actually work with us and um, other companies to post when we're we're going to be on uh, campus or attending career fairs and things like that. So definitely using your um, your institution, whether that's Handshake, uh, Simplicity, um, multiple. Um, yeah, just using those career development um, office uh, uh, avenues to uh, see who's coming and, and when we'll be there. But also just again, just general career fairs and our general general website university programs um, 
early careers and then the talent community as well. Um, you can register uh, to receive updates through the talent community um, and then we'll update you on again application postings, uh, different events that we're hosting as a company, um, like our junior leaders conference that usually happens around January of January or February, that will be 2024 at this point. Um, but yeah, we'll keep you up to date with that. And just uh, sorry to add on to it, I would say also dive into your network personally, because um, I'm a part of a fraternity and I literally would not have known about the Wells Fargo internship if it wasn't for um, someone porting me the opportunity. So, um, and really for, in terms of getting my second position here, it was also through my school. Um, so uh, really diving into your network, trying to build that out, um, depending on the different communities that you're a part of, I think that also helps as well. Um, James, I would say go that route first, because I think that's probably the best way. But, um, you know, take some time to figure out like what your network looks like and then uh, reach out where you can. So. so and if I'm not mistaken, I think sometimes these are also posted on social media. If I'm not mistaken, I've seen some things on LinkedIn and other pages as well. So another good place to get this information. Um, so it is out there. It is out there in multiple places. You can search in specific locations by specific majors. It is all there for you to find it. Um, another question that folks wanted to know, um, are internships just for undergraduates or are there graduate students that are um, applicable as well? That is correct. Uh, graduate students have uh, internships as well. Um, but again, that's through the graduate program. So they look a little bit different um, there. Um, I'm not uh, well versed in the graduate um, sector, uh, just to be honest. But um, again, if you uh, attach yourselves to that talent community, I know I keep on saying that, but um, it really is a, a, a useful resource. Um, but if you attach yourself to that, um, then yeah, you can, you'll definitely be able to um, gain more information um, or reach out to me and um, I'll make sure you uh, get the information you need and, and talk to the people that you need to speak to. Um, so, yep. Thank you. So it sounds like there's a direct source for information in case you're looking out for it. Um, again, social media networks, all the websites, direct contact, if you guys want to know now. Um, Jameson has volunteered to do that, just saying. Um, so there are plenty of places then where people can actually ask questions. And I'm looking at the clock, it's five o'clock now, which is generally when we end. But again, for folks who haven't gotten questions answered, um, any of those spaces will again, provide us opportunities to learn more or to find out more about specific areas. Um, so with that, I'll actually hand it over to Dewey. Dr. Harper, thank you so much. Um, here's what I want to do. I, I know we've got a little bit of additional time here. Let's maybe give just a few more minutes on, on the q and I think do, it's, if it's all right, we can run as long as 5.30 uh, today. So let's give it another. Um, so let's see. Hold on. We need some audience participation out there. Y'all been so good. Y'all are smiling on the Zoom box. Audience participation, raise your hand if you want the Q&A to keep on moving. I'm looking for, vir I'm seeing hands go, I'm seeing, Dr. Harper, I'm seeing virtual hands and real hands. One person started doing this. So listen, that, well, here's what that means. Y'all are on it. Let's keep the q and I'm, I'm, I got folks laughing too. Let's keep the Q&A going. Let's give it another 10 or 15 minutes here, Dr. Harper. Again, on anything else that's come in that you want to touch on, Oh, and also, let's utilize the chat. Scholars, thank you for those virtual hand raises. Utilize the chat. We'll also take any of the items that come in there via chat as, as well for as many as we can take. We're going to do another power 15 or so minutes on this. Dr. Harper, you game? I'm game. I drank let's nine Red Bulls before I came on today's broadcast, as y'all can tell. It was actually 11. All right, well, that's it, Dr. <laughs> Harper, please. Take, take this back from me. Take this back from me. <laughs> well, I can tell that I've had 42 cups of sugar for today. Be that. So I am on it and ready. So I am perfectly fine with this. So um, one of our questions was in there that, um, what happens if you get an internship? You're there, you've got the skill set, you understand where you're trying to go, you get the internship. Um, and we've talked about in some of the other webinars that there are resources within the organization. And you all have talked about that, just having great people around you. Um, so what are the kinds of ways that you actually transition from an intern into other positions, either across the organization or just full-time positions once you graduate? Are there strategies that you all have used that helped you out? Yeah, I can touch on this a little bit. Um, I think one of the biggest things is networking. Um, and we've all kind of touched on it a little bit, but um, you can maybe like your certain role and you like the group and you want to come back to, you know, if they offer you full time and you want to come to back to that same group, that's great. 
Um, but you can also network across the organization and see what else is out there. Chase touched on this a little bit too. Wells is so flexible. Um, the, you know, there's a lot of movability within Wells Fargo, whether it's in your certain division, whether it's in my division of finance, or um, if I want to cross over and go into commercial banking where Chase is or audit, um, there's a lot of different opportunities. So I think networking with different people across the organization to really get a feel for what they do and how you can fit well with them. I feel that's a great way to go about it in the internship. Just piggy, piggybacking on that. Uh, definitely. I agree. Just networking um, for the first six months. Um, I'm all, I'm all about just building habits. So the first six months, I literally try to network with one person a week, you know, whether that's in a different line of business, uh, whether that's like another analyst and stuff like that, like all of it pays like dividends in the long run, because um, honestly, like whatever job that you do, like you can learn it. Everyone can learn it. I'm pretty sure everyone on here is going to do a, an amazing job. Um, but like building relationships are like the most important thing. So the more that you focus on that, the more that'll take you like wherever you want to go. And you're just exposed to different experiences and stuff like that, which can give you a better idea of like what you like and um, what career path that you want to take. So uh, literally straight piggybacking on Odera, definitely networking. Yeah. And sorry, one more thing. I know at the, um, at the ages that a lot of you guys are at, it can be kind of scary to network. I remember when I was, you know, a freshman in sophomore, it, you know, the thought of talking to people who I thought were just so, you know, so much farther in their career than I was. Um, what I will say is that people at Wells Fargo, they love being, they love being reached out to. They love taking the time out for an intern or a first year analyst or a third year analyst, whatever it is. Um, I know that people love, absolutely love connecting with um, people that are, you know, in our age range, because they love being able to talk about their job and their passions and what they love about the job. So don't be afraid to network. It's, it's a great tool that it can take a little bit. It's a, it can take a little while to learn, but once you do it, um, really don't hesitate to do it. Well, Odara, you partially answered one of the other questions that came up, um, which was about, you know, what if you're not a Wells Fargo intern? What if you didn't intern at Wells Fargo, but you've got a great skill set and you want to get in the door? Uh, what kind of strategy should you use to get a full time opportunity? But of course, it sounds like part of that is, yes, networking, get to know people, find other things that would interest you or find other characteristics. But is there anything else anyone would add from the panel to how you could get into the door if you did not intern at Wells Fargo? Are there strategies to maybe translate other opportunities or other skill sets that you bring to the table? I can mm -hmm. speak on that because I was not an intern at Wells Fargo and I did apply and I got accepted to, uh, through the audit associate um, program. So for me, that was actually one of my biggest worries was that I was extremely worried that I know that everyone who um, interned at Wells Fargo, they're gonna have a sort of little, you know, um, they'll know a little bit more about the company, the company will know them already. And uh, well, obviously my answer will be networking <laughs> because that is how I um, got this uh, position. But it was also attending uh, uh, career fairs, a lot of career fairs and, um, Again, it was with an un unexpected twist. I wanted to be a financial analyst, but I decided to uh, actually attended a career fair specifically for insurance. But long story short, I ended up in audit. And so just being, again, open to opportunities, speaking and view networking not as a, um, uh, again, not like looking at the person as higher, higher than you, not being scared of them, but just just be personable, have good conversations. And I did um, end up getting into the program and I've had great experiences, so. Fantastic. Uh, this is one of those technical kind of questions. Uh, so we've talked about ways in which people can go out and find opportunities. Is there a way to be proactive in that um, if you want to be on a mailing list or if there's a certain position or something that if it's a job comes out, can you get notifications that come to you directly or any kind of updates or any kind of recent news that comes up? Is there a place that one could subscribe to that or sign up for that? I could speak internally for, um, and Jameson, you might be able to speak on the external being able to look for uh, different positions, but I know internally um, in Workday, there's a lot of, like we've, like we've touched on before, there's a lot of mobility uh, options in the company. So for me, I, I even do it sometimes where I'll go look up the jobs that are available at the moment. 
uh, look at the descriptions, look at what um, look at what the position really is, and you know I can set alerts to it and see what um, if it comes up, what kind of the um, hiring process is like for that. Um, so I know that's one way. Another way is you know LinkedIn. Uh, that's a great method of being able to look up jobs, um, LinkedIn and Workday, and those different um, those different kind of networking apps. Um, where they have job posting. So that's one way. Uh, James, you might have another uh, another method. Sure. Uh, Dr. Harper, could you repeat the question? Sorry, I'm trying to answer some IMs in, in real time. Keep them coming, people. Yeah, the question was about just how do you get information? How do you actually be proactive and get on either on the list where you get alerts or email where you kind of just kind of get the first end on what's going on. So if something tops up a job that may be interesting to you or that may apply to your skill set, um, is there a way that you can kind of get ahead of that to where you get those notifications emailed to you as soon as they happen? Yep, uh, specifically to us, again, talent community. Um, I've mentioned that several times, but yeah, we uh, keep that up to date um, and we're only getting better with uh, updating it with information as being on site at places and then also our events. Um, and applications posting. We are uh, posting applications uh, earlier. I mentioned before July 31st, we should start posting um, applications, most programs. Um, some may post a little later, um, but that's in a couple days. So July 31st, um, definitely look out for um, our applications. But again, if you go ahead and uh, log on to our talent community and sign up for alerts, you'll be alerted um, when those applications post. So um, that's a quick way to receive uh, alerts. Well, a follow-up question to that, Ben. Um, and two, um, what's the general timeline and process for the app internships, number one? Um, and generally, how long do they last? So let's say there's a process, and of course, there's always, you know, submit, it starts with submitting the application, but what's the general process for it? And also, if you get an internship, what actually is the timeline for that? Like, is it three months? Is it a summer? Is it a semester? Um, are there different ones for different areas? How does that work? And is it paid? <laughs> sure. I had, sure. To, I had to throw that one in there for you, Doc. <laughs> Absolutely. Definitely paid. I will start with that. Uh, you get paid to develop. Um, so that's the great thing about, about it. Um, and we're uh, competitive as well. I'll mention that also. Uh, as far as the recruitment process, um, when you apply, um, let's say you apply as soon as the application is posted um, by the 31st of, of July, um, you should hear back um, within, I would say, two to four weeks um, as far as if you move on um, to the interview process or not. Um, or you know, different different programs have kind of different um, processes. Um, but again, you should hear back whether you move on to the next steps. I'll say uh, within about two to four weeks, uh, we are having some some changes there. But um, that's usually the timeline. Um, I would say with most programs. And as far as the time frame with uh, internships and full time analyst associate roles, with internships, you're looking at a ten week experience. Midway through that experience, you will have uh, midsummer performance evals. And again, all of this is upward mobility is uh, created for you to kind of move on to the next step. So internship could potentially turn into full time, uh, a full time role. Um, so 10 weeks there with performance evaluations. Um, and then for full time roles, you're looking at anywhere from a 12 to 24 month experience. Hopefully that answered all the questions. It did, thank you. And last question, um, really dealing with kind of what you talked about. Um, I believe Chase, you mentioned that you are also a member of um, a Greek letter organization. Um, but this question deals with kind of the other things that we do, right? You go to school and yes, you pay attention to classes and you do well, but what about students who are engaged in other spaces? So if they are involved in Greek letter organizations, student organizations, um, athletics, how do you balance those time commitments as a um, intern, but also then those other spaces as well? And are there expectations of time commitment for those roles? Um, yeah, it's definitely interesting because um, similar to Adara, uh, I did my internship in the midst of COVID. And so I was um, at home. And I was supposed to be in Charlotte uh, for my internship. And um, it was over the summer as well. So I had essentially summer camp um, and trainings and stuff like that. Um, 
Yeah, definitely just taking a step back and not just jumping into it and then feeling overwhelmed, but just having like a structure that comes down to it. You, If you really just sit down and try to think about everything that you want to get done in a day um, and also um, similar to, I think, I think James talked about it in terms of like mental health and stuff like that, setting aside a time just for yourself also to recover so that you come in the next day, you know, fully yourself, prepare with energy and stuff like that. Um, that's the most important thing. So I would say like something that's helped me, something that helped me then and also is still helping me now because you're still going to, you're going to have different responsibilities and you're essentially going to be on that same type of track in one way or another. Um, just trying to have a structure for it all is the, is the most important thing. And um, understanding that, you know, the first structure that you, the first plan that you write out and stuff like that, um, everything is an experiment. So it might consistently change and stuff like that, but each day you're getting closer and closer to where you need to be, so. Yeah, and then touching on that too, I can piggyback off that, Chase. Um, like Chase said, time management is super important. Um, I, like Chase said, I interned during the summer and I was, I was a track athlete, so I didn't really, um, I didn't even have camp like you probably did, Chase, for football. So that's, it was a little easier that way, but I was still doing trainings and stuff. Um, I think the biggest thing to remember is you're not pri- to not prioritize one over, over the other. Um, is finding ways to prioritizing them at different times. So, for example, for me, I you know I w- I would do my training and workouts at five a.m. in the morning, and then I would start working at around eight. So I would give myself a nice hour break or so to really give myself a chance to reset and then move on to the next thing. Um, but prioritizing, pri- not prioritizing one or the other, but prioritizing them at different times and really having good time management, um, I think is the overall point. Um, having good time management to be present in each moment that you're doing it and not having one mind on work and then the other thinking about, oh, learning the playbook or you know whatever, or whatever else you're doing, right? Um, really prior, being fully in at the moment, you're supposed to be fully in and then disengaging and then moving on to the next thing. I think it's important. Thank you. Um, do we? Should I hand it over to you? I see your your mic was off for a second. I thought you might chime in there. I mean, you were no, seen you know what? I just, I'm, I'm playing with my with my mute button on and off here, and I don't need to <laughs> add anything. Again, y'all y'all may not need me for the next round based upon the fire that they that they were delivering today. <laughs> Panelists, Dr. Harper, I want to thank you all so so much for for the information that you that you shared, and. I do want to ask for, a, 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 I guess, a question of you all. Let's say that someone was not able to submit a question today. And I'll ask panelists for you for your raise, raise hands on this. Would it be okay for folks to reach out to you via LinkedIn? Would you be okay to kind of continue the conversation uh, in those areas? So, Jameson, acceptable from your perspective? Okay, if, if folks need to follow up with you? Very acceptable, but you got to follow me first because I need my followers uh, up. Now I'm just playing. Hey, listen, listen, hey, listen. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't figured this out already, bankers are, I won't say competitive, but uh, we love to compete, right? And so, you know, we are checking to see how many LinkedIn requests that Christina got and that the guys got. So just, oh, dear, I, I don't, you know, how many Chase get, you know, compared to the number of taxis. I mean, there's all these things that we're going we're gonna to touch on. So, uh, just, just know we're keeping keeping score there. But here's what I would submit to you all, and Dr. Harper, I know is in the same space with this. Please follow up with the folks that you heard from today. If you have questions, get another 15 minutes with them on another Zoom call. Find a way to connect in them, connect in with them for a, a virtual coffee, and continue the conversation. Um, very, very important. Very, very important. Hey, Dr. Harper, I do want to get a closing thought from you. Uh, with with any of the things that, that you may have that are that are top of mind, and, and then maybe we'll extend that same courtesy to our panelists, and then we'll go to our closing items from here. My favorite, one of my favorite comments and sentiments from everybody in the panel was really just be open to learning, but just understand you're not going to know everything there is to know in a role. It is okay. Remember, if you apply, it's okay, but don't set yourself out of the running by not applying at all, right? So it is okay. Even at the top level, there are people who get hired for positions and they don't know all the roles in there yet. You're learning and that's okay because we're always growing, engaging and learning. So just remember, you're not gonna learn everything, but be open to listen. 
Very good. Very good. Dr. Harper, great, great information. I'll let you popcorn it or pass the, pass the hot potato over to whoever you want to share that next closing thought. I'm going to Christina. Oh, well, I, I agree. Just continue to learn. Don't be afraid to apply to that job. Apply um, even, even if you feel like uh, just apply <laughs> and um, everything will be okay. Just put in your uh, efforts, put in your time, meet people and just be again, open to all opportunities. Love it. I love it. Christina, you get to pick on, I mean, you get to make our, our next, uh, our next contestant here for the closing thought. <laughs> uh, I'll go with Chase. <laughs> right. Thanks, Christina. Um, I think for, for me, just take as many risks as you can. Um, be very open to failing because failure is progress at the end of the day. Um, the more experiences that you have at the end of the day, the more that every experience is preparing you for the next thing. Um, so really nothing should necessarily be a setback and things of that sort, because you're going to learn something from every experience that you've had. Uh, we've all been through bad things and stuff like that. And we've came out in the end from it. So just continue that process and, um, yeah, take every opportunity that you can, because you never know when it's, um, you never know if it's going to come again. So just, yeah, keep learning essentially. <laughs> Okay. And, I, and I'll pass it over to Odera. Sorry about that. Let, let, Odera, let, last but not least. <laughs> yeah. Um, first off, I just want to thank everyone who, you know, took the time to tune in and also thank everyone else who was on the panel. Jameson Chase, Dr. Harper, Christina, Dewey. Um, I know Angel's in the chat somewhere. I just want to thank all you guys. Um, and my closing thought is, you know, you, a lot of you guys are in an exciting time in your life. Um, it's great to be forward thinking. It's great to have plans for the future. But, um, my biggest advice is to just be present in the moment that you guys are in. Um, you know, these, it comes by, it comes and goes real quick. Yeah. Um, a lot of you guys are in college. Some of you guys might be, you know, semi post-college. Um, I, I love my time in college and I don't think I really took the time to appreciate every single moment. Um, so enjoy the moment and, and be present in every single moment, I think is the biggest advice I can give to you guys. Everybody, let's give it up for our amazing panelists, for our amazing moderator, and for Angel Heyman, who's working double time, overtime in, in the background. So you guys can come on camera and maybe salute our, our amazing panelists here. And you heard it firsthand. You can reach out to them to continue the conversation. They're going to bill you double for overtime when you reach out to them. So whatever you paid, just know it's, it's going to double. Hey, listen, I'm going to give my closing thought around this, and, and then we're going to go into some final reminders and get you out of here actually a couple of minutes early today. There's, I'm a native New Yorker. Uh, let me just disclaim, disclose that. Native New Yorkers, make some noise in the chat. I need to see where you're repping. Any New Yorkers that are in the chat, Hollis Queens for me, but any New Yorkers that are still on, I, I'm, saying, I'm saying New York. I love New York. I love New York. There was an old slogan when I used to live in New York. Uh, from the lotto. And I'm not advocating you go and buy a lottery ticket. But the saying used to be, you got to be in it to win it. Scholars, folks listening to the playback, guess what? You've taken the first step. You, you're already in it. Now it's about the follow-up, researching the roles that are of interest to you, aligning that cover letter the right kind of way, going to the virtual sessions, following up with the panelists, following up with the, with the folks that are connected in today to continue. You've got to be in it to win it. You've started the process. Now the key is following the next steps, doing the things that you need to do with your classwork, getting those other internship opportunities, making great engagements in your communities, connecting on campus, doing all of those things that puts you in the running to get an opportunity in, a, in, in an industry like financial services and specifically with Wells Fargo. My hope is that you're taking something away from this webinar that's going to compel you to say, it's time to act. It's time for me to go. It's my time to go and achieve the things that are important to me. Again, whether you're an accounting major or a zoology major, we want you to take a look at the opportunities that are there. All right, I'm getting off my soapbox. Angel tells me I get on my soapbox too much. So with that said, I'm gonna give you some fast, fast reminders uh, relative to, to things, uh, feedback. Very, very important for us, please scan the QR code here. Again, folks watching the playback, scan that QR code. It'll take you out to a brief survey. Give us feedback.
tell us your thoughts, tell us your impressions. Hey, these are the things that I really enjoyed about today, or these are the things I would love to see us maybe tweak and adjust in the future. Take a couple of minutes. I think it's seven to 10 questions. Very, very brief. Hit that survey for us. Get us that feedback. We want to continue to build this program in a really, really great way. Hey, Beyond College, we're rolling on, everybody. We're going to talk about our remaining sessions. You know, the summer is moving. We're getting back to classes here fairly soon. Even by the time we join together in August, many of you all may actually be back on campus. So scan the QR code that'll take you out to the website to learn about all of the opportunities and all of the sessions that we're delivering through the remainder of 2023. And let us know if we should come back in 2024. We want to hear from you all along those lines. I think our next slide is again another brief reminder around our HBCU Legends program. I really want to thank everyone that's on that banks with Wells Fargo is maybe considering banking with us that has gone out and customized your banking experience with our HBCU Legends cards. We love the 30 that are in the collection now. So thank you to all of those amazing institutions that have joined. And if you don't see your school there, and by chance that you're an HBCU uh, school attendee now, let us know. We'd love to see your school represented here and be a part of our groundbreaking Wells Fargo HBCU Legends card collection. Scan that QR code to be able to learn more from there. Second to the last slide. Don't forget, there are resources that are available. My hope is that everyone that's been on has already connected to the talent community. You heard it directly from Jameson and from the team. The roles are coming in the next couple of days. Now is the time to go ahead and get connected into that talent community and start looking at what, not for a job, we're interested in career opportunities. You can find those within the talent community. Go ahead and connect to that university programs page, of course, to learn more as well. Special shout out to any of our veterans or military individuals that are on the lines with us today. Don't forget, connect in or the buddy Sean Passmore and the recruiting team there around military recruiting. So that's military recruiting at wellsfargo.com. Those messages come directly into that inbox and you can have a great conversation. And special thanks to any of those that have served in the military for, for your service here in support of our nation's freedoms. And then as we mentioned before, beyond college, we got to have you here. We got to have you connected in. With that said, I want to thank all of our partners for the amazing information that they shared. Scholars, I want to thank many of you all. I know we had some folks that got on maybe just a couple of minutes late. Don't forget, the playback is going to be available for you. So if you missed a couple of minutes of things, don't sweat it. You'll be able to go back and access that content. But do us a favor. When you review the content next time, when you're watching the playback, share this information with others. Pass it along to others on campus. Share it with the fraternity. Share it with the sorority. Share it with the folks on your sports team or the intramurals or on the gospel choir. Give it to everyone so they can have access to this great information. I want everyone that's on with us today to go ahead and register for our session on Thursday, August the 24th, all about graduate school. So we'll actually have a panel of folks on that have that have that have gone through the experience. Some folks that maybe did a full-time program or law school grads or folks that did maybe a part-time program across lots of different backgrounds and experiences. And guess what? This is worth the price of admission. We will flip the script and Dr. Harper is actually going to be on the hot seat. I mean, Dr. Harper is actually going to be on the panel next time around. So doc, you're going to have double duty. You're going to do the Q and A and the panel. And you know all all of those things, so uh, we're, we're pretty excited. But <laughs> scan the QR code and join us on August the twenty fourth. Please, everyone, have a great rest of your summer. Continue to stay safe. Let's finish strong in the internships that we're completing. Let's encourage others to continue to be successful in all the things that they're doing. If you're getting some time away, get some R and R, and then hey, let's get back to classes here in a couple of weeks, and let's handle the things that we need to do academically so we can continue to build for an amazing career. With that said, Dewey Norwood, signing off from Charlotte, North Carolina. We'll see you all next time around. Thanks a million, everybody. We'll see you August 24th for discussion around graduate school. Until then, good night.